What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out an add-on that allows you to quickly add a number of different pre-made special effects to your models. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So the Blender Dynamic VFX Elemental Asset, Asset Pack is an add-on from Southern Shoddy. You might've heard of Southern Shoddy. Um, he does a ton of Blender stuff online. He's got a great channel, which if you haven't subscribed to already, you really should. Um, he does really great animations and rigging tutorials and other things like that. Well, in this video, we're gonna talk about the new asset pack that he just released for Blender. So you can find it by going to the cgessentials.com slash dynamic VFX. I'll link to that in the notes down below. And so this is a pack of pre-made assets that you can bring in and easily use in order to add effects to your uh, models in Blender. And so note that there's two versions in here. There's a free sample pack, or you can get the full dynamic VFX pack that comes with the full asset pack. And so there's a number of different things in here, all the way from like uh, tornadoes to fire and electricity. He's also got a really cool shield effect, just a ton of different kinds of effects that are really easy to bring into Blender. Note that if you do um, purchase this, you are eligible for any future updates that he puts out as well. So as he adds um, assets to this, you'll be able to download those as well. And so one other important thing to note is you need to make sure that you're using Blender 3.6 or above. Um, so I was actually running most of this on Blender 3.5 and most of it worked, but some of the stuff like the particles are only going to work on 3.6 and above. So if you're having issues with some of these not working, just make sure that you've downloaded that newest version that has all of that kind of like backend geometry node stuff that you're going to need for some of these particles and other things to work. So now let's jump over into Blender and take a look at the way that this works. So when you first download this, it's gonna come with a folder um, which you're gonna wanna extract and you're gonna wanna put in whatever folder you keep your assets. So this is basically a collection of assets that you wanna link to in the asset browser. Um, so basically the way that works is you're just gonna go to your edit, preferences, and then under your file paths, you're going to want to add that folder as a new folder in here, and you just wanna to link to that folder in here. Now, one thing that's important, and this is something you should really be thinking about anytime that you're bringing things in through the asset browser, you wanna make sure that you set the import method to append, not to append reuse data. Um, and so the reason for that is because if you bring this in as append reuse data, then if you bring a version of something into your screen right here and you change it, that's actually going to change the asset itself. Um, and we don't necessarily want that. We just want to append that new data into our scene. So make sure you set this to append, not append reuse data. And you can also set that in the asset browser window at the bottom of the page. So when we go into our asset browser, I'm gonna go find that dynamic VFX pack. Um, in here, notice how it says follow preferences, but well, you can also click the drop down and click on the option for append right here. All right, and so you can see inside of my asset browser all of the different assets that we have in here. And there's a ton of them in here from the energy beam to the lightning strike. Um, there's the uh, fire explosion as well as the campfire. So um, you can use this to create a lot of different things, but let's go ahead and bring one in and kind of take a look at it. So the way these work, is you just want to drag this into your scene and it's going to add this as an object in your scene. Now notice you need to give it a second to get the uh, to get the uh, shaders to compile. But once you do that, you've got this big um, you've got this big lightning burst in here. And so one of the things you might notice when you first do this is if you drag one of these in here like this, notice how um, you don't actually get the option to edit this in here. Now we can fix that. Um, when we first bring this object in. And I'm not sure, I think this is just a blender thing, but when we drag this in to our scene like this, notice how under add collection, there's a checkbox for instance. We don't want the instance to be checked. We wanna uncheck that. Notice how as soon as I do that, I get more options over here in my outliner as well as down below. So you wanna uncheck instance and notice how now I can come in here and I can actually adjust things about the object, right? So I can select the curve that's in here, I can select the energy beam and go into the geometry node settings in order to set what this is going to do. So um, if I was to tap the space key in order to turn this on, notice what this is going to do is this is actually going to be kind of a live energy beam that's in here. And so most of these are going to have options over here on the right hand side of the page that you can use to adjust 
things about the effects, right? So I can add more or less displacement in here. I can adjust the scale of the noise if I want this to be a noisier beam. And you can also adjust the speed of this beam in here by adjusting the option up and down. So all of these are going to have those different effects in here. And a lot of them have different aspects about them that you can edit. So for example, this one, notice how it has the energy beam in here, but it also has the curve. And so the curve is going to set where the energy beam is going to be. So if I wanted to, I could come in here and I could draw an additional curve right here. And notice how it's going to place that energy beam wherever I put this curve. So then I could come back over here and I could delete this out, for example. So notice how you can use that in order to um, really kind of customize where your beam is going to be and what it's going to do. And so let's take a look at some of the other ones in here and kind of what they can do. So the energy shield is a really cool one. What it does is when you drag this energy shield in here, notice how those shaders have to compile for a second. But once you do that, what this is going to do is this is going to generate this energy shield that actually like moves into your scene like this. And so with this energy shield, what I can do is I can go into the geometry node settings and I can adjust things like the inner and outer shield radius right here, as well as different things about the particles, like are they inside the shield, are they outside the shield, other things like this. But what really makes this cool is this actually gives you the option, um, there's a collection in here where you can use this in order to um, use objects to cut holes in the energy shield. And so let's say I wanted to like cut a hole in this energy sphere, right? What I could do is I could do a shift A and I'm gonna add maybe like, we'll just go with a cube. So I'm just gonna add a cube right here, move it over, move it forward. And what I wanna do is I wanna drag that into my objects to cut holes. And so I've dragged this cube in here, but you do wanna make sure that you check the box for cut holes toggle. When you do that, notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna give you the ability to actually cut a hole in the energy sphere that's in here using your object. And so you could like keyframe this as well, right? So let's say I had another window down below with a timeline. So your shield comes down like this, but I could take this object and I could keyframe the location. And so maybe like later here, I could have this move across like this and I could keyframe the location again. Well now if I play this animation, notice how that energy shield toggles on, but you can see this object kind of flying through and it's cutting holes in here. And so the scanner is cool because not only does it give you kind of this like scan effect, but it also gives you the ability to add objects um, to a collection. And then you can reference the collection and do an object intersect, right? And then you can check that so that it's on and off, but notice how this will actually intersect and the object will actually occlude and block the scanner. So you can use this to create this kind of like laser scanning look inside of Blender. You can also come in here and adjust things like the spread of that object, which is also keyframable, and then number of beams that are in here, as well as the color. So a bunch of options in here for different things that you can do with the scanner, but it does give you the ability to create objects being scanned that are also blocking the scanner look. And so the smoke plume um, or the smoke curve object is really cool because what it does is it gives you the ability to edit and adjust a curve, right? So let's say I was to uh, select this curb, tap into edit mode, and then make an adjustment and then draw some more. Notice how it's going to draw smoke um, based on those curves that I bring in here. But then if I tab back out of edit mode and go into the geometry node settings, this object right here, notice how I can adjust the amount of smoke that's in here as well as the position of that smoke. So see how I can make these wider or narrower as well as the size that's in here. So you can use this in order to create this kind of like stylized three-dimensional smoke cloud in here. All right, so the weather and tornado is pretty cool as well. And the cool thing about this is you can actually add your own debris to it. Notice how that had a fair amount of like a, a fair amount of stuff And so the weather tornado option is cool because it actually allows you to add debris 
that's in here. So notice how this debris that's in this objects in tornado collection is actually going to get added into your tornado. So let's say I was to drag my Bonnie model in here, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and move this back out. Notice how there's actually going to be, or there should be instances of my Bonnie model in here. And they are, it's just that that model isn't super big and the tornado is. So probably what we would wanna do is just take that Bonnie model, scale it up, we notice how when we scale it up, then those start getting uh, shown better inside of that model or shown better inside of the tornado. But notice how those objects are in here and you can use those inside of the tornado itself. And then this is also going to be adjustable. And so you can adjust things like the different rings that are in here, right? So I can adjust this ring, make it bigger or smaller and notice how where that effect is being applied is going to happen in here. You can also adjust things like the overall smoke ring that's in here or the geometry or the uh, tornado itself, or you can adjust like the speed, the tornado, other things like that. So you can use this to really quickly kind of adjust this. Notice how you get more debris inside of the model when you make the inside bigger or smaller. Now you can also toggle that off if you don't want the debris in the tornado. So you don't have to have the debris, but it definitely gives you the ability to do that if you want to. So um, really fun, kind of customizable tool. All right, so the falling leaves one is interesting. It basically generates a collection of particle leaves that are falling. And then what they do is once they get to a floor level, they kind of like fall on the floor. But you also have a collection in here for objects covered in leaves. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to actually like simulate that some leaves have kind of fallen on a surface. And then if these are set at surface level, notice how these leaves kind of like fall down and interact with the floor right here. So you can use this to quickly add those leaves. Now, now, I will say that it does seem to be intersecting just with like this flat plane. Notice how they all kind of stop there. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you have a ground covering your whole scene so that it makes sense. Um, but um, still for quickly adding falling leaves in your scene, uh, this could definitely be a good tool. So the fog is just kind of a quick fog that you can add to your scene. So notice how I've dragged that in here. You can adjust things like the density of that fog. And so we kind of, kind of take a look at this in EV just really quick. Um, so you could probably get a better result in cycles, but this does give you the ability to adjust things like uh, the fall off in here. And so you can jump over into the geometry node settings of the fog and adjust things like the density, the amount of noise that's in here, as well as the color. So if you wanted this to have like a different color or tint to it, you could use this in order to adjust that, as well as some other things in here too, like linear fall off and things like that. So if you're looking for a quick, easy way to add some fog to a scene, you could definitely try this fog tool. So if you wanna learn more about the rest of the assets, in this uh, collection, uh, Southern Shoddy has a detailed video on how most of these work on his page that I'll link to in the notes down below as well. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this asset pack and the effects that you can create with it. I just love having that conversation with you guys. I will link to that on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.